Here's the problem that most beginners have. And this is a bad habit that people pick up at the start and it's hard to get rid of later. Look at this clip here. Does this look familiar? We can see there is trouble going on getting the filler material into the puddle properly. And then when things start to get crazy, whoops, oh man. So check this out. When most people start welding, what they're focusing on is not dipping. What they do is they lock in on what they're doing in front of them and they give their tungsten the death stare, trying so hard to keep it out of the puddle and not dip. But despite all of that focus, what inevitably happens. Yuck, that's right, they still dip. Now, I have used this example before, but check this out, this is gonna help you. Anybody out there who's watching right now, have you ever mountain biked? When you're riding down a trail and you're going a little bit fast and you're looking at a gap where you're trying to shoot between two trees, what does somebody teach you about trying to ride in between these two trees? Do not focus on the trees. You want to focus where you want to go. This is the exact same thing that we are doing with our TIG welding here. The more that you stare and intently focus on your tungsten, trying obsessively to keep it out of the puddle and prevent dipping, the more likely you are to dip. It's like staring at the trees when you're racing through them, trying desperately not to hit them. If you're focusing on it, you are going to hit it. So here's what I teach my students in my online TIG welding programs. Check this out. Instead of focusing your eyes on the tungsten like we talked about, you're gonna focus your eyes on this area right here. You're gonna be focusing on the leading edge of the puddle and by focusing on this spot, it's gonna give you something solid that your eyes can track. And this is gonna make it much easier to keep your hands steady and remain cool. You're not gonna be wobbling all over the place, getting all sketchy. Mentally, this makes a huge difference and it also gives you a better like peripheral view of the entire welding area. I think you'll probably find that it's a lot easier to follow along with the layout that you might be following or whatever joint configuration you are welding. In my online TIG welding programs, one of the first exercises that we do is intently focus on how to properly follow a strategic layout. Learning this one simple trick, as in focusing on the leading edge of the puddle, this is gonna help my students stay on track when they are first starting out with TIG welding. Now, let's talk about the filler material real quick here. Look at this footage here. The filler rod is going into the puddle super clean. There are no problems at all, I love it. You want to feed your filler rod right here. The sweet spot is going to be halfway between the leading edge of the puddle and the center of the puddle. This is the area that I call the sweet spot. I do talk about this all the time, but seriously, this is something I cannot stress enough for beginners who are just starting out. What you do not want to do is feed your filler material here. Feeding the filler material to the center of the puddle is going to cause you to pull back your standoff distance or your arc length, whatever you want to call it. You also have a much higher probability of accidentally touching the electrode with the filler material. This is a big mess, boo. And you also wanna avoid doing this here. You also wanna avoid feeding too close to the leading edge of the puddle as well. If you're welding stainless steel, this is especially bad because your filler material rod is going to get stuck. This happens all the time with stainless. It's a really annoying problem to deal with. With aluminum, you may notice that the tip of your filler material is being blown off and becoming all yucky and gross. Instead, make sure that you keep your standoff distance in nice and tight and you feed your filler material into this sweet spot here. The filler material rod is going to break off much more clean into the weld pool and you're going to have zero problems. Now, one thing we seriously need to talk about at this point here before you get going with TIG welding is how to feed the filler material properly. You would be surprised at how many people are actually really good at TIG welding, but they still cannot feed the filler material through their fingers. Like I said, this is a bad habit that's really tough to kick later down the line. A lot of people who have to go back and try and relearn how to do this have a lot of problems doing so. So seriously, make sure that this is one of the first things that you learn when you get going. And again, seriously, if you know somebody who's just starting out with TIG welding, send them this video. Now, there is a few different ways that you can learn or prefer to hold the filler material grip, but whatever grip you end up choosing, just make sure that you follow these tips here. You want to make sure that your filler hand is stationary and as you are feeding your hand should not move at all towards the welding area. Here's the problem that's really common here. People get stuck with this one. What some people will do is just hold the filler material in one static spot and as they are welding the feeding hand gets closer and closer to the welding area. Don't do this. You need to learn how to remain stationary with your feeding hand, feed the filler material all the way out and remain comfortable. Practice it like this. 
watch this here. Get set up so you're just hanging out in the exact position as if you were actually welding. What you're gonna do here with your hands stationary is learn to feed the filler material all the way out and then practice feeding it all the way back in. What you're then gonna do, because theoretically everybody's comfortable moving their torch along the workpiece, you're gonna do a dry run with your torch like this and you're going to basically chase it along the welding pass with the filler material. You can see I'm feeding it all the way out and then I'm feeding it all the way back in and I'm using my traveling as a guide. Practicing this sitting in the exact position that you are about to do a welding pass, if you become comfortable with this, it is going to help out immensely. And if you learn this, the visibility as you are welding is going to be much better. This comes in handy, especially if you are welding or working around pipe joints. If you're welding around corners of some kind of shape, you can also see there's examples where I typically am using a filler material that's bent so I can see around a corner. But more than anything, seriously, if you are just starting out with TIG welding, being able to do this movement with a dry pass like this example here is going to help out immensely and it's going to make sure that you do not develop any of these bad habits which are really difficult to ditch later down the line. Okay, let me fire up the machine here. We're gonna run a couple passes. Today I'm using the Canaweld 201 Pulse D machine. You guys see this one all the time, I love it. It's an incredible welding machine that's great for beginners as well as using it to weld out some serious stuff as well. I do think that Canaweld also has like a rebate program going on their website right now. So you can get set up with a great welding package and save some money too. I always forget to keep this thing over here where I'm talking. This is a free workbook that I use to follow along with pretty much every one of my episodes. It's in the description below. It's free, go download it. I'm gonna set up the Canaweld with super basic settings, nothing fancy at all. And cleaning my plate here and scribing a little line that I can follow, I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna get comfortable. And take a look at my posture here. Do you see how I'm set up the exact same way. My torch hand's able to travel smoothly and comfortably, but take a look at my feeding hand. It's exactly the same as I was practicing. It's positioned well out of the way of my vision, and I'm going to feed stationary from this spot here. Okay, as I flash up, I'm going to focus on the start, fully developing before I move at all. This is one of the most important pages in this book. And you can see here, I'm just watching and making sure that the puddle blends out and fully establishes a little bit of filler material, a little bit of time for things to take shape and after everything is developed the way I want, I am off. Now again, this is the area that I'm going to be looking at and focusing on here, the front edge of the puddle. Just kind of let your eyes zone out and relax, focusing on this spot. Take a look at how my tungsten is in nice and close. I'm not drifting away. And look at where the filler material is feeding. The filler material is going into and hitting the sweet spot perfectly. It's breaking off nice and smooth. And this exact same thing goes for any other joint or pass as well. And take a look at this foot here, look at my feeding hand. It has not moved at all. I'm literally just feeding out as I advance along the pass, hitting the sweet spot. This is running really nice. Let's keep going. As I approach the end, I'm going to arc off nice and slow. I'm going to hold still and let the post flow cycle cycle out before moving at all. And then take a look at these ones. Check them out. Very simple. Nothing crazy at all. Just passes on a flat plate. But you can see here from the pages in the workbook exactly what we want to see and what to look at. We want to look at our edge we want things nice and smooth, blended in equally and smoothly on each side of the pass. This is a really important detail to focus on in the workbook. And you remember this page from the book too, the starts are so important. This was something that I focused on really closely as I flashed up for these passes. Just make sure all of these details of the puddle are 100% before moving away from the start. Now as the pass carries on, we want to look at the consistency of it. The stepping distance pages in the workbook Book describe how this detail can have a massive effect on the appearance and the consistency of your welding. And as we can see, all of these things that we've been over here and a few more details all add up to some nice looking details. We have no dipping, we have stable torch hands as we are welding, we are feeding to the sweet spot. These are such massive things that every beginner should focus on. If you haven't done so already, go download this workbook right now. The book follows along with every episode I do here on my channel. You can use it to follow along with all the lessons I do here. And again, it's free, go enjoy. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty James, Phil and Chill, we'll talk soon, peace.